Hi, WWJT here. Um, thought I'd make a video for tonight on some things. I've been uh, looking at other people's uh, things that uh, they've been showing out there, like uh, the Christian gospel. And uh, there are some that are uh, kind of harsh. Some are that uh, they're bringing on God's wrath. And yes, he is angry at those who continue to live in sin. But I also want to remind you that we're not perfect and that uh, we need to repent if we do sin and try to turn from those sins. But we're going to fall off the bandwagon. You know, we're only human. But I'm not trying to preach some easy gospel here. Um, the Lord said that, you know, um, if we do make a mistake, we should go down on our knees and repent and that He will forgive us for our sins. So, um, the same thing, if you look at Mary Magdalene, what she was doing, okay, um, uh, they all wanted to cast stones and stone her, but the Lord stopped them and said, he who has not sinned cast the first stone, okay, and then she looked, then he looked at her and said, go and sin no more, okay, now, if you want to test who's a true Christian, it does say you can test them by their fruits. Now, anybody who does not have the fruit of the Spirit, which is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, Jesus' words uh, right here of the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So, I remind myself, you know, I, you look at John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him sh shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that right there, and saying, many people know of God, <clears throat> know what he did, know of Jesus, but do they really know him? Do you walk with him? You know of him, but do you know him? Has he walked with you? Has he been your companion through your life? Have you been able to talk to him? Now, if you want to know whether or not, you know, someone is a true Christian or a lukewarm Christian, which I see a lot of people talking about lukewarm Christians and staying away from powerless Christians and you know, it says, beware, I send you out as sheep among the wolves. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that he would send us out, Jesus, would send us out as sheep among the wolves? It's to preach the gospel to them, to pray for them. So that, you know, if we can plant the seed in one of them, then that seed can spread. And we look at Paul, and his name was Saul before it was Paul. And he went around and he was killing many Christians, many, 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 many. Okay, and he had he had followers, okay, that believed in him, and what he was doing is right. Now, when the Lord stopped him and blinded him for three days, and he changed around and started being who he was, Saul. When Jesus stopped him, blinded him, and told him, "You're killing. Why are you killing my people?" You know, and he turned around. And look, at when, when they saw his heart change in the way he was, it caused many to follow him and go, whoa, wow. You know what I mean? So I think that is the, the real reason why he sends us out as sheep among the wolves. Is it so that we can plant the seed? Now for someone to say, stay away from people, I don't remember him saying stay away from. He said, do not be, do not do what they do. Do not take on their customs and their idols and their... And, and, and do what they do. Do, do not be of them. But he did not say to stay away from them. When Jesus, when he hung around sinners, he hung around the poor, he hung around the downtrodden. He hung around most of them because he knew they needed him the most. Okay, and, and, and also, he, he didn't just hang around them. He did go to the Pharisees and try talking to them too, but they turned him down. Look what happened. You can read that story up there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you want to know whether or not you're a lukewarm Christian, okay? You test yourself. 
and you ask yourself, and this is the things I ask me, do I have the fruit of the Spirit? Okay, and if I have those, then I'm like, okay. And I can see some areas where I can work on, you know. Self-control is one of those that's the hardest. A lot of people don't have that self-control and that discipline. That's the hardest of them all, I believe, is to have self-control. Especially when anger comes through and somebody angers you or something comes along and you're angry. It's hard to turn from that anger and to do what is right. I remember in scripture, don't know exactly where, I'm sorry about that, but it does say that you lay down and you rest and you think about it overnight if you're angry. To be silent when you're angry. All right, so let's see here. Another thing, uh, let's see, I wrote down some things here. Oh boy, there we go. Let's see. Oh. Um, here's some other ones. You know, um, see, uh, he, he also says, not, not your, let, let not your heart be troubled. In John chapter uh, 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's what Jesus had said in that. And, and uh, so I mean, if you check yourself, look at John three sixteen. So if you if you walk with him and talk with him, and he's on your mind twenty four seven, and you're praying over your food every day, and you're thinking about him, and you have the fruit of spirit, then uh, I mean, what more to say? I mean, people want to say that there's so many rules, and that he's so strict. I mean, he had two commandments. Jesus did. He said. The first one was love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, okay? And the second of those was love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, if you do those two things, the Ten Commandments would be filled up right there in just those two commandments. So, I, I believe he doesn't <clears throat> look on outside appearance, and he doesn't look so much as um, what we do for works is by grace but also works um, but only his grace is going to get us through you know our lives and what we do should reflect Jesus and uh, if you're if you're going around listening to cuss music all the time and you're cussing and you're watching horror movies and you're eating all kinds of things that are bad for you and you I mean there's no sign that Jesus is there there's no sign so, you can, you can see them and, and look at them and know them by their fruits. And those are the kind of people you need to pray for. And I, for one, believe that we are pretty darn close to seeing Jesus come back. So, yeah, um, I'm not the best speaker in the world. Just trying to lead, do my part. And leading people to Christ. Um, I've always had a big heart for people. Um, I, I didn't want to touch too much on my testimony or about myself because I believe Jesus needs to be represented more than me. He's more important than anything. Um, and that's why I didn't touch up too much about how I grew up, where I was from, and you know all that story. I believe Jesus is the one that needs the most attention here. Okay. Um, I'm putting putting him first. <clears throat> and you gotta bear with me. I haven't been feeling very good lately. Um, I think I came down with a cold. I'm trying to get over. Um, very interesting. I know that uh, Bible Fox Box has already touched up on the statue of uh, the dream that um, King Ebenezer had in uh, Daniel. Uh, he uh, told the, the a dream. He went to the Lord and asked for the king's interpretation. Now, King Ebenezer, King Ebenezer was the king of Babylon at the time. 
This was a man who feared death and, and was, you know, he, he, he looked straight at death and wasn't even afraid of death. This guy uh, conquered many empires. He was the king of Babylon, you know, the city of gold there. And uh, that was the head. And then the statue also, was, you know, the one after that was uh, the silver breastplate and so on. And then it goes down to the... Uh, the bronze and then the Roman legs and then the, the feet of clay okay now the, the legs was the Roman Empire and then Greece was the um, the bronze and then silver was uh, Medo-Persia so and then the ten kingdoms that were separated by the, the uh, clay mixed with iron and the ten kingdoms so and then a rock came from space and smashed that statue into pieces and the rock grew upon the earth and that was the Lord representation of the Lord coming back and establishing his kingdom that will last forever so um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the mark of the beast and what it is that it's a microchip I think it's going to be a combination of maybe both because um, they have to enslave us you know it says that we're not going to be able to buy or sell when that mark of the beast comes. Uh, I think it'll have to do with something with uh, worshiping on Sunday, forcing people to worship on Sunday and only Sunday, plus uh, the microchip um, being computerized um, somehow going into a small chip to where uh, money will be useless and that you will have to get this chip to be able to buy or, or sell with it. Um, so I, I think it might be a combination of both of those. Uh, we know that uh, Saturday is the true Sabbath. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to touch up on a little bit of other things. Um, trying to figure out I don't have an audio recorder on my on my computer um, that. I should grab my glasses too but, um, there's a real good book out there um, called uh, Ten Commandments Twice Removed is another good book if you can find that one. I actually have that book. Um, but anyways, um, you must that a lot of you, one of you commented on some poems that I wrote, so I do have some poems. I didn't know how long I was going to make this video for. It's just one of those late night chats. Um, but I do have some more poems on here that I'd like to read. I want to get to that too. I have one called The Meaning of Time. You all would like to hear this one here. This one here is. I did back, uh, let's see. I think around 2003 or 4 I did this one. Anyways, it says, So much time, so much so much in life little things taken for granted missing a touch or a simple hug sun rising and sunsets the smell of a flower or even the smallest smile of a baby's face as we go on not thinking of even the little thing, the light of a new day as we carry on in our fragile lives, time has more meaning than we have ever imagined. What's the meaning of it all? These hearts that beat, these tears that fall, the birds that sing, walls that fall, the buildings we make, love within itself, the cups of blood that were spilt, the clock that ticks on, the years that go by. The cry of a baby, the morning of a new day, the and uh, okay, the cry of a baby. I lost my place here. 
and the prayers in hand, we will we ever find answers we look for. Take the time to appreciate, to smile back, to listen, and to compliment, to love one another. What is the meaning of time? So, the morning of the dead was another one on there. I said in the morning of the dead. And what is the meaning at all? Now, that's a poem call, that I wrote called... Uh, papers all sticking to my elbow here. But, uh, yeah, that's one I call, I wrote called, What is the Meaning of Time? Um, let's see here. A little bit more. Bear with me here. I'm just trying to find the other ones I have in here that I wrote down. This one I wrote and it's called Love by God. Love by God. I am just a speck in the vast making of all life and objects. I will be here for just a blink of one's eye, then gone the next. What was the meaning to live so short? I am but one voice carried through space for one time, crying to be loved, looking for guidance in a world despised, full of lies, born in the image of the Creator's hands. With such high demands over one's life, in this test, if I shall fail, who would be there to tell if I was ever there? Who would care enough to remember he tried? It is not important. What was the meaning of the little once there, or the shadow cast out? Was there something to be learned? If so... It didn't. It did. It don't do that or else. Or in any case, I would be grateful for the experience to have just lived and knowing, no matter how little I am, made by His hands, and I will be to to. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would be grateful for the experience to have just lived and know, no matter how little I am, to just know that I, everything was made by his hands and I will always be loved by God. Yeah. That was a pretty personal one. And uh, I should have grabbed my glasses because when I'm reading, my eyes kind of skip lines there for a minute or two. But um, this one's called Hurry Before It's Too Late. Sleep is a kind of death, the morality of hum humanity, lying, stealing, killing, in the, in the mines, controlling, unloving, money, worshipping, despisers of good. Should you all understand your time is at hand, change and give a loving hand. Repent and believe. He died for you and me. Can't you see? Don't you want to be free? Live your life as if the Mighty One does not exist. What if you're wrong? When you are gone, to whom did you really harm? Did you really think your fire arms would protect? Wake up or feel the angel's sting. Read the writings on the wall. Can't you hear the power of it all? Come embrace his loving grace. See the smile on his face. He laughs at those that disgrace his words of faith. Stand at the pearly gates and wait, or put your hate away with what you make. You take, you hurry before it's too late. And that one's called, Hurry Before It's Too Late. This one's called, Just Think About It.
people everywhere coming and going in such a short time, each one leaving a blueprint. This world and the human condition is like one big helter skelter. Many paths we all take in a moment difficult, different from one another. No one thinks exactly like another. We are all even different from another. What makes us tick so different? Some crazy, some smart, some gay, some straight, some black, some white, some brown. What is it all for? What is the great plan? Some believe, some do not. Some believe in something else. Why? So many different religions too. Some right and some wrong. Some there is no right or wrong. Can we really say that all of this is just an accident or that it is just happening by some random anomaly? Knowledge, where did it come from? How did we get to know what everything is or what is not? What makes us alive? Sound, where did it come from? When, where did it come from? Why do we think? How did we learn to think? How did we learn to, to learn? What makes us smart? How do we know we're, we're smart or who's to say? Time, where did it come from? Where do we go from here? Just think about it. Alright, All right, I'm going to read one more. Well, actually, two more here. Just two more poems, and I'm going to cut this off. It's pretty, getting pretty long, the video. So, anyways, this one is called, Please Take It All Away. Take this life I have, I lay it down in your hands. Take this heart of mine, I lay it in your arms. Take this pain of mine, I lay it in your love. Take this hate of mine, I lay it in your joy. Take these tears of mine, I lay it in your care. Take these take this loneliness of mine, I lay it down in your comfort. Take this restlessness of mine, I lay it in your peace. Take this heart of mine, I lay it in your presence. Take this sin of mine, I lay it in your grace. Take this home of mine, because you did not have one. Take my passion away, because you care. Take my breath away, because you deserve it. Take everything away. I give it freely, because you are holy, and own everything anyways. Please take it all away. And this one is called for Jesus has won though I am damaged I will not quit my heart has been drunken but still sees the light with their words they've torn me apart I will still win the good fight I have fallen into the night but I still know what is right they all left me behind but I will not be last I will be first they have cursed me, <coughs> but not both brought me out the worst in me. They have not brought the worst in me. They have cut me down like a tree, but not my roots. They have sunken my boat, but yet I swim. They have stole my happiness, but not my joy. They have left their scars, but not their, but not their wounds. They have lied, but I still see the truth. They have set their traps. They have aimed their guns. They have hurt everyone. I have just, I have not come undone. For Jesus has won. Mm. I think I got just a little bit, and yeah. Well, this one's called Inspired by the song um, by Phil Collins, Land of Confusion. It was cons that inspired to give the title of this one that, but uh, the title of this poem is called Land of Confusion. Having a roof over my head, walking up, waking up in the morning, wondering how long before it collapses down, never knowing if I will ever find steady ground. 
I am lost waiting to be found, the pieces of my life burning down to the ground. I thought I was living to learn and learn to live and learn to live. The words of people and people coming in and out like the wind, leaving me here lost within. The land of confusion, loved by one person and a child, actions of others, love in vain, countless cigarettes, hands around neck choking. I am but an empty shell, hoping for the best, preparing for the worst, expecting nothing because nothing is final until it happens. Bodies walk on everywhere. Let me see here. I lost my lost my thing here. I am an empty shell, hoping for the best, preparing for the worst because nothing is final until it happens. Bodies walking everywhere, filled with idols of money, lust, worldly power, and fame. Mindsets of Mr. Jack Cole and Mr. Hyde. Blood of life wasted in their glasses. Justice for one and one for all. Translated to one for one and one for one. Government playing the weakest link. Courthouses. The board game. If you got the money, kill for free and do it again with a little slap on the wrist. Batteries not included in this land of confusion. So, yeah. It's, it's so sad if you, if you really look at it and you, you really look at what's going on in the world and a teacher's given the free knowledge that they learn through their life they should be paid a little bit more than what they do what you think alright this is what uh, WWJT signing off with a little bit of cold <laughs> but still hanging in there and uh, you all have a blessed day wherever you are night or day Love you all. God bless.